Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of our Terraria modding tutorial series. Today we're going to learn how to create a custom dash. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. I found myself delving deeper into the Team Loader API and one of the things that I was doing when I was kind of like overhauling a bunch of vanilla items was, you know, modifying the dash. And I was like, oh, well, this is actually like a pretty cool thing that I think uh, people could use because it's actually not as hard as you might think. Uh, and it's a really great way to maybe add some kind of uniqueness to your mod. So I have open here my mod player. So my global player is derived from the mod player class. And if we go into the mod player class, you'll see a whole bunch of stuff right here. All the functions that belong to the player that you can override and change. You can see like the, the on hurt, the pre-update movement, accessories. But let's go back to our mod player real quick. Our global player does, yes. So this is a separate file and you can see I I've called this mod better Terraria. So how do we actually make the dash? Well, first let me go into the game so you can kind of see how this is going to look. So right now I have equipped something called a big feather and it's like a very early item. You can craft it using normal feathers, which now drop from uh, like vultures, uh, you know, flying fish, I think as well. And then even the, the flying antlions. So anything that really flies has a chance to drop a feather now, which means you can craft stuff like this. But if I double tap, you can see I have a little dash now. Uh, it's nothing too crazy, but when you're really in the early game, you can kind of see that this makes quite the big difference. Like if I just have my lead armor on and I'm running around, this could be a really great way to kickstart like a Hermes boots effect or maybe, you know, get out of the way of a, a boss's attack, like the Eye Cthulhu or something like that. So it is, it is uh, quite effective, but that's what we're going to be making right now. So first thing we have in our mod player is a public boolean and this is going to determine whether or not we actually have the accessory equipped right and if i go into my accessories into my big feather which is what i've called it this is uh what it looks like you can see in my public override void update equip i have my player dot get mod player global player the name of my uh file here and then dot dash feather that does actually mean you can have more than one uh, mod player. And this is really nice if you want to kind of organize your code a little bit more, but personally, I don't need to. And right here, you can see I have my dash feather set to true and my dash accessory equipped set to true. So the way I've done it is I've kind of like uh, abstracted it just a little bit more. So instead of having like a, a separate code for each dash, all the dashes uh, use the same exact code. And instead, depending on which feather or whatever or shield, whatever you have equipped that grants you a dash, it will give you uh, a certain dash speed and dash effect. And it's super easy to change that. So this is what the accessory looks like. I'm just setting these two things to true. So let's head back into our global player. This is where our dash feather is. And our actual dash accessory equipped is right here. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. The first thing we have is our enum dash type. And because I only have one dash in this mod currently, I only have feather. But say I wanted to add something new, like a, I don't know, like a super shield or something like that. I could just say super shield is equal to one. And then if I have my super shield, say like I had like a public rule, I don't know, super shield or something like that. If I had this set to true from an accessory, I would just change my dash type to the dash type dot super shield right and obviously you would do that uh, in code in a switch statement so that way you could just like handle multiple different kinds of dashes um, but this is the enum dash type right there so it's super easy to add another dash and i'll actually i'll, I'll add another one just for uh, for show right now next we have our dash directions so zero is down one is up two is right and three is left so i did actually try to add a uh, down and up dash it didn't really work out as much as i wanted it to though it just felt kind of weird you know it didn't really feel like it uh, fit in the game very much but you can pretty easily add a uh, dash up and down that's just adding to the player's velocity dot y uh, but anyways we have our dash right and our dash left which are basically just like these constant directions that we're going to use to determine where we're actually dashing uh, okay, next we have our dash cooldown. So this is going to be the time in ticks. So 45 ticks is like uh, three fourths of a second. Uh, that's going to be the cooldown in between each dash. And then the dash duration is kind of how long the dash is going to last. And next is the actual dash velocity. So this is what you want to switch based on the dash type. Then we have our dash direction. So the dash direction uh, is basically just are we going left or right? So remember how we mark these as const, right? Well, dashter is going to be the variable we can actually change. And you'll notice when we are double tapping in our reset effects over here, we're actually setting dashter equal to those uh, constant integers right there. And that's going to be where we're actually dashing into. 
and you don't need to worry too much about this stuff this is separate and then we have our dash feather equals false and dash accessory equipped equals false we always want to reset uh, our booleans in the reset effects whenever we are done this is called at the end of every frame okay awesome and just to talk a little bit more about this stuff right here this player.control write and release write basically is just saying are we actually uh, pressing our, our, our write move button, which would be in this case would be D. Player.doubletap cardinal timer is actually a very specific array. I had to look at the documentation for this, but this uh, position 2 within this array or index 2 in this array is actually like the double tap timer uh, for dashing right or for the D key and dash left is the timer for the A key. So that's that's quite interesting, and I don't remember what it was for the up and down. I think it was, was it, I think it was zero for up, right? Am I, am I right with that? I'm not sure. I think it was zero for up and then one for down though. But if you want to check if you can double tap in a direction, or if you have double tapped in a direction, to be more precise, make sure that you're uh, using two for that, and then three for left. Or did I just get it mixed up again? No, I didn't. It is three for left and two for right. Okay, awesome. And then we have a final else here, which is just going to set our dash door to negative one, which just means that, okay, well, we're not actually dashing in a valid direction, so we're just not going to do anything. Okay, awesome. And then over here we have our pre update movement. So right here, this is where we're going to be actually applying our dash. So we have a little uh, function here called can you stash, which is defined uh, right there. And this will return if our dash accessory is equipped and our dash type is equal to zero, and our uh, and we're not using the solar set, which basically just means that we don't want to override the solar armor set bonus. And if we're in a mount, obviously we don't want to do that either. And because we want to be able to reuse this over and over and over again, we're not going to just type all this out every single time. We're going to put it into a private pool function, right? That just makes sense. Okay, awesome. I also don't like the naming of this. What is that? It should be a all caps like that, yes. The D should not be a uh, underscore. Okay, and then we have our dash dir is not equal to negative one, and dash really equals zero. Which, to be fair, we can actually put this in here. Um, let's just go ahead and do that real quick. So it was dash dir and dash really equals zero. So there's no reason to not put that in there, I guess. I mean, these things are a little more specific, so maybe you don't want to do that but this should also just work perfectly fine uh, and it's a bit more readable like this right a little more reusable next we're going to get our velocity of our player and we're going to start a new velocity so we can change it and apply our dash so then we have a switch statement which is going to switch based on the dash direction you can see we have two cases here and for both of these cases uh, for dashing left when so this is actually a, a keyword i was not familiar with at all in c sharp but it's like a condition Right when a when a certain condition is, is met, it will return true, uh, and this is is very cool, right? So you can literally say, okay, well, if we're dashing left, when our player velocity is greater than negative dash velocity, so when you think about uh, what dash velocity is, let's go back up here, seven point five. If our velocity dot x is greater than negative uh, seven point five then we're going to go ahead and apply that dash because that means that we're not already moving so fast that our dash is not going to be effective and it's the same for the right if our velocity is less than our dash velocity then we're going to apply the dash velocity otherwise we're not going to because why would you what, what, what would be the point like say you are moving at like a, a velocity of 10 which if you have hermes boots on for the most part i think is is faster than 7.5 right the, this dash that we have is not very strong uh, the actual through the dash is a little different, but say you were moving at, at, at a move speed of 10 and you wanted to dash it with a move speed of 7.5, you would quite literally be slowing down. So you need to make sure you do these checks here so that way you're not setting your velocity to something that's lower than it already is because right, you want to go faster. And you might argue that you, you could just have it be additive, um, but not always. But that might not always be what you want. It is true, you could literally just say new velocity dot x, uh, maybe plus equals something right maybe like a certain percentage uh, or maybe just a flat number right could just be uh, a flat number like you could just say plus equals dash direction uh, times like three or something like that or whatever dash velocity is maybe that could just be a lower flatter number but this is also fine too and it also means that you can't go above a certain velocity so it's almost like it's being clamped in a way but that's what that does and then i have a default here just because it's just good practice and next we're going to set our dash delay to our cooldown so this is going to start the timer and we're going to set our dash timer equal to the dash duration. And then we're going to set our player's velocity equal to our new velocity. So that's going to actually apply 
uh, the dash effect. And then we're going to play the dash sound. And I actually had to put comments here saying this is a dash sound because you can see it says the monk staff swing. And this just sounds a lot like a dash sound. So I'm using that. Uh, and then right here, we're going to actually decrement the dash delay. And once that hits zero, we'll be able to use our dash again. And then next, we have our particle effect while dashing. So this is where I actually switch uh, the dash type over here. So this is where you can already see I was starting to uh, do that little switch statement there. So for different dash effects, we're going to just uh, have a different cases here. So let's actually add another one. I'll say this, dash type dot super shield. And we'll just say in dust tube. Can't, can't have the same name for the dust, sadly. Uh, and we will say... What should we say? Dust ID dot flame burst. Let's just say, like, why not, right? Something that's very obviously different <laughs> from what we have. And by the way, I think I actually made a little bit of a mistake when I was talking earlier. Uh, dash delay is not like the timer. That's obviously going to be the dash timer, which is equal to the uh, uh, dash duration, right? So that means it might actually be better. Instead of saying if dash delay is greater than this, why don't we just say if dash timer uh, is greater than zero, right? And then maybe our dash duration should just be 15. And that makes way more sense because then in our switch statement, we can actually change uh, the how long each of our dashes takes. So I'm actually glad that I found that. Anyways, let's look at this uh, line of code again. So if dash timer is greater than zero, player.eoc dash. So this is a really easy way to just uh, set that dash effect right with that blur and stuff like that. Uh, and, and it looks real nice. You don't really, I don't really think you need this. I can try commenting it out uh, and see what happens. I always like doing that. I like just messing around with things. But um, then we decorate our dash timer. And once that is equal to zero, the effect will no longer be getting played. Okay, I think that might be it. I think that looks like it's it. So let's go ahead and save and uh, build our mod real quick. But it looks like to me, you can see, uh, I'm dashing with my feather and it looks like everything works fine. Ah, look at that, I didn't even know you could do that. But if we define an enum inside of our global player, we can actually access it in our accessory. So we can just say, instead of having a switch statement, we can literally just go in here and say, set our dash type equal to super shield. Okay, that's very cool. So that's gonna save uh, quite a bit of of, uh, of problems here. So we, we can just reset our dash type to our dash type invalid now in there, every frame. We don't need to have any if statements or switch statements or anything like that. We can just do that. So now that we have our super shield active, uh, we, can, we can actually say this. We can do a switch here, switch dash type, right? And then we can say, let me say our dash velocity, 7.5. We'll say case dash type dot super shield. We'll say dash velocity equals 12f. So it's pretty pretty obvious, right? What's going on here? And then for our feather, we'll set it to 7.5. Okay, we are gonna have to move this uh, below this. Probably a good idea, right? because otherwise our dash type will always be invalid there. Oh, okay, so I think it might work, you know? I think it might be working, but that's really cool. So let's put that down from 32 to something maybe like 16. Okay, there we go. So 16 is like a really fast dash. Maybe if you had like a, a hard mode, like late hard mode accessory or something like that, but looks like that works fine. And you can see when we get rid of the EOC dash right here that I commented out, that will actually get rid of the blur effect, which we should probably keep on. I think it looks quite nice, right? And let me put that back, 7.5. And let's also increase, oh, you know what we can do? Let's set our dash duration to be different for each one. So for the super shield, we'll do that. And then for that one, we'll just set it to 15. So this is really cool. So now we have like a, a really custom kind of dash system going on here. So if we ever have like a bunch of dashes, super easy to add one. So let's go back in and you can see we have now a longer particle trail with this one because our dash duration is longer. All right, but that's gonna be it for uh, this video. I hope you guys learned something new. I think this is like a super cool thing you can add to your mod uh, to maybe make things a little more interesting. Uh, if you want, you could also maybe add like a custom sound effect, you know, add it to the switch statement over there, or maybe just uh, do another one down here. I don't know, it's just kind of nice to have a single switch statement, but uh, it doesn't really matter, I guess, if you have uh, more than one. 
Making mods is very time consuming and you do not get anything in return. So if you want to support my work and game development over on Patreon, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.